Hello everybody, I have returned after a very long absence to do a very relevant review. I've got a bit of a sore throat, so if I, or a bit of a cough actually. So if I cough a lot, yeah, I cough a lot. Um, but I'm going to review WCW Starcade 1995. I haven't really heard a lot of people ever talk about this show. Um, and it's, it's, it's a really interesting show, I, I found. I've been watching Nitro, I'm watching the pay-per-views, and this show really stood out to me, and I really enjoyed it because, you know, I am a fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling, but um, I was also a fan of WCW, so a lot of these matches were really interesting to me. I was really looking forward to watching it. Um, but, you know, one of the problems for the show was it wasn't really built up too well. It was, you know, kind of covered on Nitro, but none of the wrestlers were really introduced, um, none of the matches were really extensively covered, um, so a lot of the fans who were going into this, if they had no knowledge of New Japan Pro Wrestling, which was likely, um, really didn't know who these guys were wrestling, like a lot of their WCW favourites, they didn't know who they were wrestling, so for them it wouldn't have been really a big deal, you know, considering it's supposed to be WCW's biggest pay-per-view. Um, <clears throat> And I think that actually hurt a lot of the matches, the lack of fans knowing what was going on. So you had a crowd that, for a lot of the time, while the action was quite good, would be sitting on their hands. Um, so yeah, I'll get into the review. First match, Jushin Thunder Liger versus Chris Benoit. This match was very good, considering they you know had about 10 minutes to work with. It wasn't quite as good as their New Japan matches, but I still felt it was a really high-quality match for the time permitted. They both worked very hard. Um, but, as I said earlier, I felt like, you know, what hurt the match was the crowd didn't really get into it as much as they could have. Um, and so the match kind of suffered because it felt like everything was a bit anticlimactic. And, you know, despite the really hard work they were doing, so I give it mm, three and three quarter mat at uh, three and three quarter stars. So, nearly great. Nearly great. But, you know, which is, which is really quite good considering how much time the match had, which was almost none. Um, next match was Koji Kanemoto versus Alex Wright. Um, I like this match as well. I will give it a three and a half stars. Um, Koji Kanemoto worked really hard, and so did Alex Wright, actually. Um, I liked, you know, Koji Kanemoto's kicks and all that kind of stuff, but part of the thing is I felt every time the match was beginning to build momentum, it was stopped with a rest hold, you know, a leg lock, whatever. And so, yeah, kind of didn't, it wasn't as good as it could have been. It was, you know, three and a half stars. Could have been really great. The next match was the Drizzling Shits. Uh, Lex Luger versus Masahiro Chono. I give it half a star. It was mm, about five minutes too long. Masahiro Chono worked hard to try to get something out of it, but nothing really happened. It was just there. It was just happening, but there was no drama to it. Lex Luger won really quickly. I mean, Masahiro Chono was a big star in Japan and a really good worker at that time. <coughs> but the match just turned out to be absolute fucking garbage. Um, it was short, anticlimactic, nothing really happened. I mean, I'm really struggling to think about anything that really stood out about that match besides this torture act that ended it. So, half a star for that. Shit. Next match was also the drizzling shits. Johnny B. Bad versus Massa Sato. Um, who thought of this match? Because it was fucking mental. You got Massa Sato, who is big, slow, you know, fucking useless in the match. I mean, a good worker, you know, in his prime, but he wasn't in his prime at this point in time. Jamie Bad was ha like having some really good matches on Nitro and on pay per views. He, you know, was had been feuding with uh, Diamond Dallas Page. <coughs> but yeah, this match was, you know, just kind of there. Like Johnny B. Bad couldn't really do anything with him. Um, it was just slow and just eh. I'll give it half a star as well. Um, next match was Shinjiro Otani versus Eddie Guerrero. This match was probably the best match, um, single match of the show. Uh, I'd give it four stars. Um, Shinjiro Otani was doing great as a heel, and actually it worked. Like, he was actually getting heat from the crowd, 
and I wanted to see Eddie Guerrero beat him, and Eddie Guerrero was a really great face. Um, and it was, you know, a high-paced match, uh, told a good, you know, simple but good story. Um, you know, uh, the, the crowd got into it. I really liked uh, Shinjiro Otani's uh, springboard drop kick. Um, but yeah, they, but you know, as you would expect, they're both, you know, were top class, you know, yeah, top class workers. So they had a really great match, and I'll give it four stars. Um, next match was Randy Savage versus Hiroyoshi Tenzan, or Tenzan, however you prefer. This match was just kind of there. It there was nothing special about it. It was short. It really underutilized Hiro, Hiroyoshi Tenzan's abilities, um, and Randy Savage's as well. Really, it was short. Just basic, one star, nothing really to write home about. Um, next match, Sting versus Kensuke Sasaki. Now, Kensuki Sasaki probably had the most exposure of all the w- uh, sorry, all the New Japan guys at, th- at that time in WCW. It wasn't, it was just alright, it was, you know, what you'd expect. Sting had another match coming up right after that, so he didn't really overexert himself. Um, Tenzan really, it just, it didn't click. I mean, this, it just, nothing really, at no point did I go, wow, this match is really something, so I'll give it one and a half star. Um, the next match was the, oh, so, yeah, basically, WCW won the World Cup of Wrestling, and the announcer spoke about it for a good, you know, 30 seconds, like, oh, it's so great, the World Cup of Wrestling, ooh, we won it. Um, <clears throat> The next match was no longer part of the World Cup of Wrestling, but the World Heavyweight title picture. Um, Ric Flair versus Lex Luger versus Sting in a triangle match. And now, this wasn't just three people in the ring wrestling all at once. You had to tag someone in or out to be in the, involved in the match. Now, the Sting versus Ric Flair portion of the match was, as you'd expect, fantastic. It always is. Um, I mean, the previous pay-per-view, World War Three was also fantastic that he, you know, Ric Flair at his age, just what he was doing was, he, he was fucking off the chain. He was like a man possessed when he wrestled Sting. Um, he was fucking running around from ring to ring. And this match was, you know, quite, you know, when they were doing that stuff was quite good. Eventually Lex Lou got, you know, tagged in. And, you know, it was actually also quite good as well. Ric Flair, you know, was trying to get his offense in and, you know, Luger no-sold it. Then Ric Flair started, you know, going for the leg and, you know, working over the leg. Ric Flair, you know, oh, sorry, Lex Luger then lexes up and, you know, scares Rick and Rick kind of, you know, starts, you know, as Lex Luger gets some momentum, you know, points at Sting. He's like, I want Sting, I want Sting. Um, And, you know, then tags Sting and then gets out of the ring. So Sting and Luger have to wrestle each other. The pace of the match slowed down a bit, but it wasn't too bad. Um, you know, they were kind of saying that these guys were tired. I mean, they'd had a match each, and then they were doing this match, and it was quite late into the match already. So they're wrestling. It's quite even. Um, there's a ref bump, and then, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Ric Flair... Oh, um, st- I, I, oh, now I can't remember, but... I can't remember the exact chain of events, but... Sting or Luger wound up outside the ring. Ric Flair got the ref... Oh, before he got the ref up, threw the other one over the top rope and then got the ref up. The ref started counting and as Sting's about to get back in the ring, Luger grabs Sting's hand and stops him from getting back in. This was a big deal because Sting and Lex Luger were supposed to be best friends and then Lex Luger stops his best friend from, you know, getting back into the match and, you know, continuing to wrestle. So, Ric Flair wins the match, and I'll give it four stars. So then he gets to go on to wrestle Randy Savage for the WCW Championship in a match that was just there. Um, You know, Ric Flair was tied. Randy Savage looked pretty, you know, average um, in this match. But he'd already wrestled once that night. Sorry. Sorry. Now I've got the hiccups, not a cough. Um, but the match was just kind of there. It was it was average. You know, I didn't expect much of it because Ric Flair just wrestled a pretty long match. Um, but in, he ended up winning the match via interference. I'll give it two stars because it was it was all right. 
Um, but he, he won the match via interference. Basically, Arn Anderson hit uh, Randy Savage with brass knucks. Hit, you know, there was four horsemen interference and all that kind of stuff. Ric Flair won the title, but what was you know really good about this was Ric Flair was the heel, but the crowd went nuts for him winning. They were quite happy. There were people in the front row who, who were excited that Ric Flair won the WCW title. So, yeah, that's the show. Um, I don't know how to... You know, it's really tough to rate this show because... You had some really good matches in there, but they could have been better. And you have some really shit matches in there that really hurt the pace of the show. The concept was good, but it was poorly executed. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Just okay. <laughs>